Good morning, artists. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about color. We are going to use our paint chip plates that you got in your packets that were sent home to you uh, last Friday. So one thing I want you to notice about the paint chip plates is that they look like the color wheel. You see that? Except there are some colors missing. So which three colors are these? They have a special name. I know my older students know the answer to this. Primary colors, good, primary colors. So with these three primary colors, we can make every color you see on this color wheel. Even brown, that's why the dog is in the middle. Because if you mix all three primary colors, as many of you know, you'll make brown. But I don't want you to do that first. I want you to, as you work, think of the color wheel. So if we look at the color wheel, in between yellow and cyan are the greens. Call that the green family. So in between your yellow and your cyan paint chip, you will mix green and put your green paint here. All right, same thing between the cyan and the magenta paint chip, we've got the purple color family. So here, you'll use these two paint chips and you'll put your purples here. And then yellow and magenta makes orange, so your orange will go here. And then the last color you can experiment is making that brown, and I saved the middle for making brown. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to use the paint chip. Okay, so for this, you're going to need a paintbrush. Oh, wait a minute. What if you don't have a paintbrush? We're at home. Oh, wow. Okay, try a Q-tip. I like to make my own paintbrush. I just took a stick out of my backyard, a rag, just take a rag like this, fold it, wrap it, put a rubber band around it, and put it on your stick. This will work great as a paintbrush. Obviously now you're not gonna be able to get fine detail, but you can still paint with it. Just make sure you put it in the water first. <sighs> bubble wrap. I like using bubble wrap as a paintbrush. Also, if you just twist it like this, put it in some water, it's like magic. So I get my bubble wrap wet, and that's what we need to do to our paint chips. We need to get them wet. So I'm gonna start with cyan. I'm gonna take the bubble wrap, and I'm just gonna wipe that bubble wrap on my cyan to loosen the pigment on the paint chip. And as I do that, you guys can see how the water starts to pool up and puddle down here. Look at this, I have blue on my, it's like magic. I am painting with bubble wrap. Oh my stars. A Q-tip will work too. You might go through a few more Q-tips, but you can use that also if you don't have a paintbrush, a sponge brush, go look through the garage. Probably your parents might have some kind of a paintbrush in there um, for painting the house. So I'm going to start by making some violet. If we add magenta to the cyan we have here, we're gonna get some violet. So I got a little bit of blue going on. You need a lot of water for this. So I'm just gonna keep dipping that Q-tip and rubbing my paint chip to release that pigment. And see how I'm getting that little puddle of cyan down there? Now when the paint chip starts to get white, well that means there's no more paint left on that spot, so I have to come over here and rub on a different spot. I want to only rub on this side, leave this side over here of the cyan paint chip for when I make green. All right, now I'm gonna dip again in water. Water is your friend during this process, artists, because you are going to use the water to release the pigment on those paint chips. And then I'm gonna put the magenta in with the cyan, and I made some purple. Oh, there's my purple. Beautiful. So that's how you use the paint chip plates. I have my pool of, of color here, my paint here, and I can paint, and I can do pointillism with a Q-tip. I think what I might do is, this is just practice, I think I'm going to make ice cream. So on my paper, and I'm just using copy paper because, you know, that's what we have at home. I like to draw my idea first. So I am going to draw an ice cream cone. I'm gonna do a triple, a triple Decker ice cream cone. So ice cream scoop on the top is going to be round. I'm not gonna draw the bottom yet because the next scoop is going to be right there. And then again, the next scoop right there on top. And again, don't draw the bottom because now I need to draw the cone. 
So decide what kind of cone you want. I'm going to just draw a simple sugar cone. It's going to have a little bit of a curve here because, you know, the cone is round. And then maybe come down like this. And then again, a curve. And then the bottom half of the cone is a little thinner. And again, that curve at the bottom because the cone is rounded. All right. Now, I'm going to put some shadow lines on my ice cream because each one of the shapes that I draw is going to be painted a different color. And my goal is to try to get every single color that I see on my color wheel on my painting. So I want to make a yellow orange, an orange, a red orange, all the way around. We're just practicing color mixing today. I'm going to put a line back here for a table. So it looks like my ice cream cone is sitting on a table. Maybe the sun's coming from this direction. So this side of my ice cream cone is going to be a lighter value. This side will be a darker value. So I'm going to do just a little circle here, shape. So like this is the light side. Maybe it looks something like this. And we're just playing with it and having some fun. And then here on the cone, the line would be a little bit straighter because the, the cone isn't round this way like the ice cream scoop. It's flat. And then same thing here, but you're going to bump it over because it's a little bit recessed in. So there we go. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, plus my table, 11, 12. So I've got 12 areas that I can paint the different values in. All right, now it's time to get started. So again, take your paintbrush or your homemade paintbrush. I'll use my homemade stick paintbrush. And I'm going to start with yellow. I always like to start with the lightest value first. Remember, values the lightness or darkness of the color. So again, I am just rubbing to release the pigment and letting it pool up. And I'm going to paint some yellow right here in my first cone. I like that I made these shapes nice and big because I can't get a lot of control with a stick paintbrush like this with just a rag wrapped around it and a rubber band holding it in place. But hey, it works. We're at home. We're improvising. We don't have art supplies like we do in the classroom. Now, I don't even need to rinse this because I want to mix the yellow with the magenta, but I do need more water. So I'm going to dip it back in my water. I'm not going to rinse it, but I'm just going to dip it and then put it in the magenta and then look at how that magenta blends with the yellow to make orange. So now this side of my cone is going to be orange. Look at that. Already I have some different values. I have yellow and then orange. Yellow is a lighter value than orange. So this is good because my sun is on this side. So this is going to be lighter. Now I'm going to make a little bit darker value of orange. So I'm going to add some more magenta. Because remember, we're working our way around that color wheel. So this is going to be a little bit darker orange. And I'll put that there. And that value is darker than that one. And then I'm going to just do maybe some straight magenta. So I'm going to come over here and just rub with my homemade stick. And then put just magenta right here. All right. Keep working that way, artists. Going around and then start with your purple. Do your purple and then maybe green. It can be your table. Have fun using the paint chip plate. A Q-tip, homemade paintbrush with a stick and a rag and a rubber band, bubble wrap. Really experiment. I want you guys to actually in the comments tell me how did you paint if you didn't have a paintbrush at home? How did you make a paintbrush? All right, have fun with that, artists. The great thing about the, the paint chip plate is as long as there's still pigment on these chips, you can let this dry and you could reuse it again. And I believe the fourth graders didn't all get paint chip plates because we ran out. So maybe if you have a younger sibling, you could share with your older sibling. But hopefully in the future, we'll have more for you. All right, have fun, artists. Make it a great day.